My name is Sarah Carpenter and I'm a Backcountry Access Ambassador and one of the owners of the American Avalanche Institute. In this video we're going to talk about how to organize a backcountry rescue. It's really important every season to practice your rescue skills with the people that you ski or ride with. Do it early and do it often. It's also important to be prepared for any injuries that you might see due to a fall, hitting a tree, or getting avalanche. That means take a first aid course geared towards the wilderness, as well as carry a first aid kit with the equipment that you can deal with those injuries. The third thing to think about is be prepared to stay out longer than you anticipated. If someone gets hurt or if someone gets avalanche, you're gonna need to manage their temperature, keep them warm and dry before help comes. If your partner is caught in an avalanche, the most important thing is to make sure the scene is safe before you enter it. As a rescuer, our first instinct is to rush in, but it's important to take a step back and assess that the scene is safe. Make sure there's no snow above you that might come down on you. Make sure there aren't any other people that are gonna come down on you. In general, assess that you'll be safe to rescue. The thing we don't wanna do as a rescuer is create more victims while we're trying to go help our friend. Once we know the scene's safe, it's worth asking a few questions. Figure out how many people were buried, and if it's in your party, that should be an easy question to ask and answer. If they were wearing transceivers, and the area that they were last seen in, because that helps reduce our search area when we do turn on our transceivers. Once you've made sure the scene is safe, consider calling 911. If you call 911, have your name, your phone number, the location, number of people buried, and what you might need at the ready. At that point, hang up. If you don't call 911, but you have a GPS satellite messenger, push the SOS button and start moving. Your partner's survival depends entirely on the resources that are available at the scene. You want to get their head above the snow as soon as you can. That's the essential piece. There's a lot that has to get done in an avalanche rescue. The first thing is you need to have a leader. And that leader assigns jobs and takes control of the whole scene. When I take control of the scene, I make sure that everyone knows what they're doing. I make sure that all the transceivers are on search before entering the path. Uh, and I make sure that when we're searching, all the victims are accounted for and up on the surface. We also need transceiver searchers. Obviously those folks need to be good with their beacon, so make sure that your partners are practicing and that you're getting a lot of training outside of watching these videos. You need shovelers and probers. Folks need to be able to locate buried victims with a probe and then efficiently dig them out. And that's where the manpower is really important. The more people you have shoveling, the quicker you get your partner up onto the surface and the higher the likelihood of survival. Another job is looking for clues. Finding someone with a glove sticking out or a piece of an airbag sticking out of the debris is a lot faster than actually having to do a beacon search. So making sure that someone is actually looking at the surface of the debris for clues is really important. Once you have ensured that the scene is safe, everyone has jobs and you're ready to search, have a systematic approach to this rescue. Everyone should enter the scene in a predetermined manner in the same path with transceivers on search and all electronics that are not essential turned off. At this point, if you have a point last seen in a known flow pattern, head straight to it, move downhill until you get a signal. If you don't have a last seen area or you don't know where your partner was carried, spread out across the debris and make sure that you cover it in search strip widths of 40 meters or less, meaning having people 40 meters apart or even closer. Once you find a signal, make sure you communicate it to your partners and use your mountain voice. Everyone needs to know that you're on a signal and that you're getting closer in order to provide you with the backup of probers and shovelers. When you're searching the debris, if you find a clue such as a glove sticking out of the snow, go ahead and tug on that glove. Make sure it's not attached to a hand. If it is, you better start digging. If it's not, probe around it and leave it in place. Same thing with a ski pole or a ski, tug on it, probe around it, and then leave it in place. If you find a snowmobile, make sure that you probe around it and also look underneath the snowmobile. Really common place to get buried. If you don't find people, make sure you leave all those visual clues in place because oftentimes people are traveling in that same trajectory and heavier objects go further downhill. 
A snowmobile can be a very effective tool for searching for visual clues as well as transceiver signals in a large avalanche path. Avalanche rescue can be overwhelming and it doesn't always go as planned. Some pitfalls and mistakes that happen often on rescues include lack of leadership or poor communication. It's really hard to run an effective rescue if you have poor communication or no plan. Another mistake that commonly happens if you have multiple buried victims, having all of the rescuers converge on one signal. It's important to make sure that you cover the entire debris area. Another mistake that can happen on rescues is a rescuer forgetting to turn their transceiver to search or someone coming in to help with their transceiver still on transmit. Following those renegade signals can throw the search off and really slow it down. Another thing that comes up with these searches is electronic interference. Any non-essential electronics need to be turned off and any essential electronics need to be far away from the searching transceiver. Learn how to use the advanced functions of your transceiver. It can help build a mental model of the avalanche scenario that you're facing. With the Tracker 3, you can use the big picture mode to get a sense of where each victim is buried. You're gonna get a distance and a direction readout. This can help you allocate your resources appropriately and affect an efficient, fast rescue. No one goes out into the backcountry to get hurt or killed in an avalanche. We all go out in search of those perfect days where our partners work, the weather's beautiful, the snow's incredible. But it's really important for all of us to be prepared for the worst. We need to be ready to search for our partners, dig them out of the snow, take care of them with first aid skills and supplies, and be ready to spend the night in case something goes wrong. Be prepared for the worst to hopefully go out and have those best days.